the Birdman, who spreads his wings and defies death every time he goes out to work. Jay Shadler has his story. I think courage comes from a person who acts in spite of fear. You know, if you're scared of something, yet you still push yourself through it and do it, to me that's special because that means you, it, it's not easy for you, it's hard. Jeb Corliss is insane, insanely committed to facing his fears, and this jump is rushing him toward the biggest risk of his career. Last Saturday in Switzerland, donning a wingsuit, Jeb leapt from a 7,000-foot cliff. His target? Pluck balloons from the hand of one of his ground crew while rocketing by at 120 miles per hour. A miscalculation of inches could prove fatal for him and his assistant. I want to try to see how close I can get to flying over a person's head. Can I get four feet over their head, three feet over their head? As he approached the man on the ground, it suddenly looked like he was coming in too low, too fast. But wait, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Jeb Corliss has been dreaming about flying since he was a child. I was about five years old, and I was watching these birds, and I remember seeing them start to fly. And I remember going, you know what? When I get older, I'm gonna do that. People told me it's not possible. And I'm just like, maybe you can't. <laughs> but but I, I'm going to do that. The son of art dealers, Jeb wandered the world with his parents. Oh, I was always the new kid, you know, I was always starting a new school. I was always, you know, six years, six different schools. And it was, you know, I spent a lot of time alone. Maybe too alone. As a teenager, Jeb fell into depression and his world turned dark. I decided I wasn't just going to kill myself. I wasn't just going to take a gun and shoot myself in the head. I wasn't going to waste it, you know? If I wanted to die, I was going to do something with my death. I was going to do something special. So Jeb took his teenage death wish and started base jumping, leaping off high structures with a parachute. Well, geez, you know, if I jump and I make it, well, then I've done something that very few human beings have ever done or would be willing to do. And if I don't make it, well, then I get released from my suffering on this planet. So either way, you know, as far as I was concerned, I won. I thought it was a way for him to just kind of accelerate getting to the end of his life. Everyone in our family tried to convince him that it was selfish and that it was wrong and that he was just hurting all of us. And yet, in a twist worthy of a Zen master, Jeb says when he was free to die, he started to live. And all of a sudden I went from being a really dark, really depressed, really unhappy little teenager to being to loving my life and just loving everything around me. God, that's a lot. What is that? 480 feet. Oh my God. One by one, he checked off the towering goals of his sport. From the old Paris landmark to the Patronus Towers and the Space Needle in Kuala Lumpur. And then, while base jumping in Italy, Jeb glimpsed his first human bird. Instantly, I was hooked. You know, I'm just like, man, where am I going to get my hands on a wingsuit? Ever since, Jeb's been dancing on that mystical ledge where life itself appears in high definition, with its arms wide open like the great statue above Rio de Janeiro. I jumped out of a helicopter, flew at the statue, came about 10 feet away from the statue, flew under its arm. That's a religious moment. I got to see the Christ statue in a way that very few other human beings have ever gotten to see. <laughs> but he's seen death up close, too. In 2003, he and his good friend Dwayne Weston were attempting a dual flight above and below a Colorado suspension bridge. Dwayne misjudged his flight path, slamming into the bridge. <laughs> I couldn't really process what was going on because I was flying between all this debris. And a woman sitting right next to where I landed, she looks at me and she'll know Jeb. He hit the bridge and he's dead. And I learned an enormous amount of information from my friend Dwayne dying. What did you learn? Be sure you're doing what you love. He died doing what he loved. Which would you prefer dying? Driving your car, getting hit head on when you didn't even see it coming? Or living your dreams doing what you love? And so, despite being winged by death, Jeb Corliss keeps pushing on, pushing the limits of human flight. These are the cold, jagged ridges of Switzerland's Matterhorn, the 
the snow-capped prize for the most advanced wingman on the planet. His plan, jump at 16,000 feet from a helicopter into sub-zero temperatures and graze the mountain with just his shadow at 200 miles per hour. I was like, oh my god, I shouldn't be this close. That ridge, with those little pinnacles coming up off of it, as you're flying down, I mean, you're underneath them, you're like flying in between them, and you're just like coming down the ridge going, oh, it felt so good. That's the absolute best proxy flying I've ever done in my life, without, without question. And that brings us back to where we began, where he is practicing for the most dangerous stunt of his life. In September in China, he will attempt to rocket through this hole in a mountain, threading the needle or dying. I'm going to be coming, I'm going to be dropping out of a helicopter around here, about 2,000 feet above the cave. Then I'm going to be flying towards the cave, and I'm going to be coming through the cave going this direction, right around here. Flying through the mountain, and then coming out on the other side of the mountain. This is the single most difficult thing I've ever tried to do, ever. And his training here in the Alps is nearly as dangerous. To perfect his skills at flying precisely, just grazing objects and people, he first aims for a waterfall, splashing through the bullseye, and now plucking those balloons right out of the hands of his crew. This is, um, without a question, the closest I've ever come on purpose. I meant to come over his head by only a few feet. These are all things I meant to do. Next stop, China. Eventually, Jeb dreams of one day landing his wingsuit without parachutes, taking him one step closer to those birds he loved as a boy. Oh, those birds, they've inspired a lot of crazy ideas in humans and more than a few poems, like the one that rhymes, if I die while I'm in flight, whether brightest day or darkest night. Spare me your pity, shrug off the pain, secure in the knowledge that I would do it all again. That's 100% how I feel. No question. 